And welcome back to Cigar Time, your friendly neighborhood show all about premium cigars. Almost blew it. Almost. Yeah. Welcome back. <laughs> you got it. I'd still say it to you. I'd say TV show. Okay. TV show? Yeah. Okay. Welcome to TV show all about premium cigars. How's that? Mm -hmm. So welcome back. Everyone, Moose, you awake? Yes, I am. More or less. All things being relative. Yeah. <laughs> What are we smoking today? A cigar. Yes. We are smoking uh, a La Polina KBTAA double X, which is a whole lot of names. A lot of letters. Uh, the KB stands for Kill Bill, right. which I always find entertaining. Yes, absolutely. You know, I never really, now I think about it, I always, it's Bill. Paley. Bill Paley? Yeah, I don't, I just I, never, yeah. It's never dawned on me. I always immediately think of uh, the, the movie. movie. Yeah, I, the I, I wouldn't much expect a cigar company to name a cigar kill the founder. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I don't know. I hate you know, kill, kill Fuente. Yeah, oh, sure, that would be a great name for a cigar. Kill, kill Carlito. Oh, they'd, they'd sue you. They'd, they'd sue <laughs> the, uh, be, uh, over the, be, uh, the No, BMX. it would come from them. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. I, I hate Stephen Singer thing. is genius, though. That is pretty funny. You see it everywhere. Everywhere. What's the blend on this, Paul? I know you were just looking it up. Uh, the blend, it's interesting, actually. It's a Honduran Corojo wrapper, hmm. a double binder of Honduran Criollo, mm -hmm. and... Nicaraguan Criollo and Corojo Phillips. Watch this. So it's just a, this. it's an this. interesting combination. Real draw. Yeah, well, it's because it's, it's got a nipple on the front. And I, I on the front. Ball would be all over it. <laughs> hey, Paul, can't resist. Um, I want you to tell me your opinion of the cold draw, because you guys, the other two guys, lit it up already. I can't ask them that. All right. First, I gotta tell you that there's something on the back of the band. I don't know how exciting it is. Is it a map? Treasure map? No, yeah. it says. Is it a blue dot? He's Cardone? almost dead anyway. <laughs> then it might be about Bill Paley. <laughs> I thought it actually is. That's pretty funny. He's so. almost dead anyway. That's pretty funny. And who is that? That's probably no. Bill Paley, because it sure be. as hell doesn't look like uh, Bill Thurman. from the movie. You're not going to be able to see that. But. And it definitely doesn't look like <laughs> Uma Thurman. No. no. <laughs> or Lucy Liu. She's beautiful. She's cute. She's cute. Particularly in that movie. Yeah, she's yeah. Hot. All right, cold draw. What do you think? Are you getting anything? I can hardly get air through it cold because of the nipple. It's got to okay. warm do you, up. Do you have any Fucking taste nipples, at all? Man. They always start out cold and get hot. <laughs> yeah, and I'm getting a very distinct wine taste. Sorry, you should have warned me about this cold draw thing. I already lit the day. I know, that's why. I yeah. Are you red getting wine. that too? Like red a red wine. wine. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that might be that they... Part of the added a, Well, if it was just the Bethune, you wouldn't taste it. You would taste the result of it, but you wouldn't taste it. So either they decided to overdo it with the Bethune, right, to give it a whiny taste, or they did it separate from the Bethune, right. But there is definitely wine in yeah. the process here somewhere. Should I retro held? We got sneeze. <laughs> yep. Right every every, every week. Uh, uh, every week. The show doesn't start. Until Until Scott Scott <laughs> yeah. Usually I might, but I can fight it off. Not today. I'm psyched. Tomorrow's the Masters. Starts, yeah. Bless you. Again. Bless you. Who do you think's going to win? The guy in the green jacket. The guy, yeah, the guy who ends up with the green jacket. Seve Ball Stars. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't not this year. So. No. <laughs> no. Okay. I would felt bad. I, I loved it. I, I love the Masters is awesome. Watching the Masters. I, yeah. I like watching the U.S. Open. Masters, something about it. I absolutely yeah. love watching it. You're, 
You remember a bunch of years ago. It was a long time ago. It has nothing to do with cigars. But they were having a big to-do about letting women into the club and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And they had a bunch of women's protesters and stuff. And I saw a picture of a bunch of women screaming and yelling. And there's a guy behind them holding up a sign that says, Wash my shirt. <laughs> I don't remember that. Wash my shirt. <laughs> or iron my shirt, something like that. Very funny. <laughs> so whenever somebody mentions the masters, that's the first thing I think. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that guy in the, the guy, the guy in the sign. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah, that's pretty popular now. Now he'd be, he he might get arrested now. <laughs> Just for holding up that sign, someone might call it hate speech. Pretty yeah. much. We're terroristic threats. <laughs> exactly. Well, right. common sense. It's the way we're, it's the way things are going. Um, wow! It really once you get past that nipple, it, it really it really up. opens up. <laughs> <laughs> really. It's that, gonna be a fun show. <laughs> that statement covers a hell of a lot of ground. Mm -hmm. well, once you get past the nipple, everything opens up. Yeah. Can't argue with that. No. no it sounds sensible. Mine's still tight. Okay. It, and you know what? Wet too. Is mine might wet? be. Mine might be tunneling. <laughs> tight. Might wet. be really hot inside. Once you get pissed. Really? You, you know why? No, it's not. Because you had that end in your mouth trying to be a clown. Oh yeah. <laughs> that would make a tunnel. Before I lit it, Rob. I got gotcha. you. Ah, it would have dried out by now. Okay, Paul. Yeah. I have a question for you. Uh oh. Uh, you'll know the answer. Um, or I'll I was, make it out. Get up, please. I was wondering about this. I was, I was just thinking about, you know, maybe I was watching something, you know, they're, they're making the cigar. They've got the, um, what's that thing called? The binder. <laughs> They're making that the bunch. Thing. They've got the binder there, and they they're putting the, the filler in. Um, in a Lieberman device. In, it, it doesn't matter. Lieberman device or over by hand. Um, and they you know they they break the ends off and they put different. How, is there? What does the recipe for the cigar look like? Like it's got to be. I'm assuming it's written down somewhere. And is it very specific? Like okay, you start off with the 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 the, the, the Seca from lot eighty nine. And then you've got the Lajero from blah, 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 blah. The, the supervisor does that, not the rollers. The rollers get a package of tobacco. I, no, no, I, I get all that, but I'm wondering, like, it's, there's somewhere there has to be a record of what the blend is for the cigar. What Absolutely. does that look like? Like, well, how is it written? What is it? I should bring you some of mine for next week's show. Yeah, oh, that'd be cool. Yeah, to, it would to, be. To give you an idea. That'd be very I mean, interesting, They're handwritten, they're old. Right. In your handwriting? Oh, uh, God. No. Oh, God. Then we can see. <laughs> <laughs> so people can read it. Um, but yeah, what it looks like is a list of the tobaccos, the ages, uh, and the primings. Okay. Some people will list fermentation targets in their, what I call the blend Bible. Uh huh. Uh, I do because I, you know, I'm such a big believer in the, the role of fermentation and. How you can modulate things that way? You have to do it properly. Properly, yeah. <laughs> you want to have the proper modulation. Exactly. You always want to. Oh, shut up and sit down. Exactly. Don't be an idiot, you moron. Yeah. Or something like that. So, um, so yeah. I mean, that's that's basically what it has. Okay. Right. But and where pro is it written? And proportions. Okay. Maybe. But where is it like written? Like okay, you. You're you're doing the bunch, and it's the, you're putting this. There's the second in first, and then you're doing some of the the viso, and then the um, the the lajero. Okay. Like, is that all specified? Which because what are you? Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. And yes. Usually, what does that? Usually not. Usually really? not. Because when I was when uh, every time I've you know you sit down and roll cigars at a factory or whatever, you grab the wrong piece of leaf. They're like, whoa, whoa, whoa! You gotta you got this goes first. Well, there are some things that don't need to be written down that are obvious, like uh, combustion control leaves don't go in the middle. 
they go last before the bind. Do the rollers know that? Yeah. yeah. The, the roller knows like what. Like What's the combustion, combustion Well, no, they know that the seco goes. Let's say the seco goes last, and the uh, velado goes first, and the, the seco would go first. Since it, since it's, if you, I, well, I guess I'm just doesn't... throwing out oh, examples. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, okay. I'm not. I'm not giving you the formula. Okay. But I'm throwing out an example. So they know that. Right. They don't maybe know combustion versus flavor. That's the blender's job. Okay, so then, so then, back to the original point. Then it actually should, it, it, it must be written down then for, s for the blender. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay, you sit but down. But now, how does that relate to you were talking about tearing off the pieces and well, sticking them back? Well, because then, like, do they say? I mean, if you're you're breaking off of the of the end of the tobacco, okay, and now you're putting, let's say, it's you got some uh, lajero in there. And now you're filling in some of the, the, the empty spots. Yeah, but, but is form, that specifically the designed? The formula is based on full leaves. So if you tear off a piece of a full leaf that was part of your formula and stick it back in, it doesn't change the formula. No, but it changes. But, it would only change you, the formula if you tore off a piece and didn't put it back in. No, but what I'm saying, you've got to Why? Say, no, 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 no. Why? Yeah. Why would it change the formula if you didn't put it back in? Okay. Because the leaf is still there. You're just breaking right. off the end of it. Right. You're breaking the off the end, and if you don't put it back in, there's less of that leaf in it. But so that changes the formula. Not necessarily. Oh, okay. Not, I see. No. All right. No, no, no. Here's, I see, here's I see a leaf. What you're Let's I see say there's only saying. one leaf in the whole cigar. Okay. And the formula is one of those. Yeah. Okay. So now you start to roll it up, okay. and you tear off a hunk. Right. It's now not one of those. But it's not it going to change the quarters of change, one of those. Right, but, but it's, it's not, not going to change, change the flavor of the cigar. No, because it still get the well, flavor I mean, of the cigar. A little bit because the tip is different than the... Yeah, yeah. because That's you, you all notice I'm that saying. all if, the cigars if, you smoke, you notice that that it changes a little bit. So that's where my that so that's sort of leading to me where my question is is where is it written where because they all do it. I mean everybody I've ever yes, seen make a cigar ever. they and then they put and it they in different don't spots. Do that by flavor. They do that by construction mechanics. So the pieces go into where there would be a void. Okay. So they so the the, the buncher decides where, where to put it. And but, and it that's not about flavor. If the formula says put a half a leaf of Lajero at the back because you want the cigar to kick right, up in the back right. half, that might be there. Right. But where to put little pieces that you tear off and stick back in is basically a judgment by the buncher based on how the bunch lays okay. out. That's, that, that's what I thought, but I would think that they would, I mean, I understand why they're doing it, but... Wouldn't that change? Yes. The, the, not the overall flavor, but the progression of the cigar. Yes. So if you're not, so yes. if all of a sudden you're hitting a, a, a packet of Lajero, like they, yeah. they, they snap, they snipped it off. I'm like, oh, we need some Lajero. We don't need any tobacco which right is, here. Which is why if you read on any of the cigar review sites where two or three people review a cigar blind, they always have such completely different statements. And some of that has to do with everybody's palate is different. And mm -hmm. some of it has to do with the progressions on every cigar are slightly different based on where those pieces go. Right. It, just, so it, it just has to be, it it has to be that. I mean, you can't, unless they have some neutral, like, okay, you got a pile of neutral tobacco over here and this is what you And we're to, gonna use that to, yeah, but yeah. they don't do that. Right, well, it wouldn't be practical. And it would make the cigar less flavorful. <laughs> yeah. Well, you feel any, right. any percentage of neutral tobacco that you add reduces the amount of flavor in the overall cigar. Right. Okay. Yeah. Something, something being missing. Like something's missing about that whole that whole thing. If you take the if you take the bunch, Glass and there's loaded. there's three there's three. Um, Separate tobaccos. Here they are. One, three, two, separate. Three. You take. So there's a book that says, and the formula that says, you take this one first, this one second, and this one third. You put them in in the bunch. You break off, depending on the size of the cigar, you break off however much you need to break off. 
and then you put it in in where the voids are. Okay, so at that point, you have the exact three things that you started out with. Right. But if you rip off a piece and don't put it back in, now it's different. This is less of a leaf than the other two. It, no. Yeah, yes, but it won't. No. But that won't. No. It is. I, I, I see what you're saying, Paul. It is less, but it's not going to change the flavor. It's not because if that. No, it's not because yeah, if that that no, piece of tobacco it, doesn't have a specific place to go. How's it going to? Because that the tobacco that is still going to be there. Because you the now have more of the other two, and they'll overpower the, whole the other cigar one. Cigar in the whole leaf. The blend is not based on torn off chunks. The blend is based on the whole leaf. So if you tear off a chunk, that's okay. The formula hasn't changed as long as you keep that tobacco in, in the, the process, cigar. Yeah. Just imagine that the leaf that you tear is always Lajero. And tell me that you can't cut off, rip off a third of the Lajero leaf and leave it out and it's not going to change the flavor. You still have the Lajero leaf in there though. But not as much. It's not going to be. Because you strong. tore off a piece. Okay, then that then there is a plan for where that then there is a plan for that tobacco to be put back in. That, yeah, the voice. assumption it, the assumption is that it will be put back in as far as formula goes. The assumption is it will be put back in. Hmm. Something sounds off about that. Yeah, there's there might be something that you're taking for granted. We know yes I, that we don't know. I understand well, about it's the, the based only, on the whole leaf. The only thing that you have to take for granted in this perspective is that every leaf and every part of every leaf has a contribution to the flavor of the cigar. Yeah. Think of it by weight. If each leaf is a quarter of an ounce. And you have four leaves, so the cigar is going to be an ounce. And you take one of those quarter of an ounce leaves and tear it in half. Now you have an eighth of an ounce of that tobacco. That changes the formula so, a lot. So then what you're saying is that the, 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 where the tobacco is in the cigar is purely based on combustion? When they are rolling it, yes. That's where they put the pieces. Right. Yeah, the pieces are so, it's based so on like construction. So like Seco first, then the then the then the Viso, and then the Lajero. Just making that up. That has everything to do with combustion and not doing nothing to do with how the flavor is going to change. It's going to change some blend. Cigar to it's going to change anyway. First of all, as you but smoke a cigar, even if there's no small pieces, right. it's going to change anyway as the temperatures. Uh, you know, as the cigar itself heats up, and as the things that come out of the tobacco accumulate in the rest of the tobacco, uh -huh. the flavors are going to change. Yeah. Some people blend with transitions in mind, so they put some half leaves in the back half, or some quarter leaves in the back quarter, or they, they mix up partial leaves as part of the formula. Mm -hmm. But the buncher gets a packet, and packet A, packet B, and packet C take a leaf out of there, a leaf out of there, two leaves out of there, right. bunch your cigar, tear off your pieces, and be sure you fit them in or the flavor's different. So do they, do they go over that like every morning, or, or do most people, most, the, most rollers or bunchers are bunching the same cigar every day? Pretty much, but they get a packet and a list each day. Does it have so, like instructions and all that? Yeah. Okay. One of these, two of these, okay. three of those. But where you put those extra pieces is going to change the cigar. It's going to change when you taste what. Right. So you can taste okay. these two cigars. Depending on where they put those broken pieces, where the, um, the voids were, I'm going to get... Pepper before you get pepper. Now think about us four sitting. We here do it all the time. Every yeah. week. And Moose will say, you know, I just got a maple syrup note. Right. And you'll say, no, I didn't, I didn't get, get that. that. Right. And five minutes later, you'll, you'll say, oh, right. now I got the apple. Right, exactly. And that's, that's, and that's where that's where because, because of those extra pieces. Hmm. 
that's why you get it at different times, but it's all there, unless you don't put all the pieces back in. If you don't put the pieces back in, some but of that, that little flavor piece, won't that be little, there. But that little piece that you break off isn't the piece that has the maple syrup in it. The it whole, might be. The, the leaf, the whole leaf has maple syrup in it. But you're just adding it more well, to a specific uh, spot. For the, so when you hit that spot, the, you taste it more. Except for right. the tip of the leaf has different flavor than, the, than the, the foot or the base of the leaf. And if you want to get deep into the chemistry of burning tobacco, yes. Yeah. The tip of a leaf tastes different than the back of a leaf. And then that's why, the, and that's why the, that's why it always, it, it, that's always at the, uh, the foot of the cigar. It's also why they cut tobacco the long way instead of the short way. Mm. Hmm. There's something odd about it. Something just not sitting right. I know what you mean. Something just doesn't sound because right. Because they're, they're so, they're so I precise with everything. <clears throat> Which is the, one of the things that um, that baffles me the most out of all of Cigardom and everything I've learned is how organized they are, and it's yeah. it's it's amazing. And I'm like, they, they have, they just, it's impossible to not put the wrong tobacco in cigars from a cigar from time to time. It's a, I mean, it's a, with all the hands that touch it and all, it, it's impossible to not. Gee, I accidentally grabbed some. Arapacaca, whatever, however you pronounce it, instead of the... Arapacaca. I can't pronounce it. Arapacaca. Instead of that. So it, it, that has to happen from time Arapacaca. to time. Arapacaca. It has to happen sometimes. One of the ways you minimize it is by giving the rollers or the bunchers prepackaged groups of tobacco. That makes sense. But yeah. You, yeah. even then, the supervisor who picks the packets out of the bales of tobacco, yeah, right. could make a mistake here and there. I mean, I've seen when I was... And quality control would never catch that. No. You uh, wouldn't catch that you? until you smoked this cigar. Exactly, yeah. yeah. When I went down pre a couple weeks ago with AJ, they had, in one pilone, you could see that they used the that nylon string to tie up the hands. Uh -huh. um, they used that to distinguish between what's Seco, Vila, or Seco Viso and La Hero, I believe. And, but there were some that so they were they were some that they had different were colors in the, the same pilon. So they were aging the primings separately. Yes, except some there were except there were times when they decided where, to mix them. No, they it, they just they didn't decide to mix. It got mixed. It just they're like oh well they'll they'll figure that out later kind of thing. <laughs> okay. Well, it still had that? the well, it still, had, still the, had the, no, the, color, still had the color, so they knew what it what kind of leaf. That's it was. why once in a while you get a cigar that you smoked a lot, and all of a sudden it goes, "Oh yeah, what the hell is this?" Yeah, and you get that little string. It's it's human error. It happens in the product. I've gotten strings in my cigars. Yeah. Oh Lord, please. Hmm. Well, so anyway, I know that, that, those nylon strings are the worst because uh, they melt in the cigar, and you get this goop. I got a hair of the cigar. That happens a lot. I can't ima I can't believe that doesn't happen all the time. <laughs> all the time. Seriously, because I don't, I'm, I was thinking, when I saw this, and I actually, it was in there good, so I actually literally had to take a pair of pliers to pull it out. It was, I mean, it was rolled in there. And uh, so it's just, I guess it just got to thinking. I'm like, don't they wear hairnets? And I'm like. A lot of, of them do. I'm thinking back. I'm like, do they have them? It depends on the factory. Some factories yeah. they do. Some factories but they don't think that way. There's got. I mean, hair's got to get in five percent of the cigar. I mean, maybe we shouldn't talk about this, but <laughs> but then I'm like, okay, I'm like, ooh, I, I lit the cigar anyway, and I was like, hey, was it gonna? Like burnt hair is a very Distinct distinctive. Yeah. So if your cigar is off, it could be hair. But that has to happen. There has to be I've, a calculable percentage of time because your hair's falling out. I've, well, your hair's falling out all the time. I've Fine. never. I've never had a... You never knew. You have. You didn't know. Well, you would smell it. You, you had to have. There's there's no way you have... There's no way you haven't... Statistically, you have to have... There's no way <laughs> you haven't had a cigar where a piece of hair fell into it. I, there's no way. I've never pulled one out of a cigar. Let's put it that way. That's uh, different. That, well... No, I see the chicken feathers all the time. <laughs> the chicken feathers are a thing. I know they are. That's because... It, not in the bigger, fancier, more sterile factories, but in the typical cigar factory in Nicaragua, there are chickens running around. All over the place. So you're going to get feathers. 
And when you get feathers, you know what happens. You get oh, that God. weird thing that hangs. You can't throw a so dart many and, not jokes. A, and not hit a chicken. They're all over the damn place. And iguanas. And iguanas. That's well, exactly right. If you find an iguana feather in your cigar, <laughs> you're, you're in good shape. There's been some... Weird stuff going on in the field. All right, Moose, let's get our first impressions here. Uh, it's burning well, good construction, mm -hmm. easy draw. Mm -hmm. um, after the nipple. After the nipple. Uh, uh, yeah, well, see, I realized it had one and I could deal with it. Uh, <laughs> um, the red wine was very strong in the beginning. Mm -hmm. It's mellowed out a little bit, but it's still there. And I'm picking up just a little more pepperiness. Okay. What would you give it on the strength scale? Zero. <laughs> Two. <laughs> I mean, it's flavorful it cigar, don't get me wrong, but it's, it's the, in the power rating, it's only a two. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't have said zero, but Gadfall. You say zero? On the strength scale? Yeah. Yeah. Um, as far as the wine, I really only got that in the dry draw, mm -hmm. the cold draw. I did not, I don't get it out of the burning cigar hardly at all. At the moment, what I'm getting, and it's overwhelming any other flavor, is earth. Mm -hmm. I'm getting huge earthy notes. Okay. And that's kind of blocking out yeah. whatever else might be going on. Scott? The, the, I, don't, I believe the construction of this one is horrible. Was, really? Like, look at this. Yours is really tight. You have a tight draw. You, you gotta have a plug. I yeah. No, no, it's 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 not plugged. It's it's a firm draw. It's not overly tight, but it, it, I'm not getting any smoke. No, like it's, I, it's almost as if there's a, maybe under the wrapper. There's a, I mean, under a the hole. fan, there's a hole or something. Yeah. Oh, well, you can good. taste that though. You can taste the air. You'd be able to taste the air. Yeah, but so because I'm sitting here, this this is puffing out all kinds of smoke. Yeah, me too. I'm I finding it to be kind of stingy with smoke. Are you? The draw is fine, but it's not a lot of smoke. Yeah, and it's well, okay. and I'm, I'm I mean we've how long have we how long have we been doing this? Twenty seven minutes. Twenty seven minutes and I'm just barely getting past the nipple. Did you guys see there's a some uh volcano was blowing smoke yeah blowing a smoke rings? Oh, no, I didn't see that. Yeah, it was really cool. Yeah, it was Mount Etna. That's really? right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it erupted, and for some reason, the smoke was coming out as perfect rings, a whole succession I'm of sure them in the sky. Sure, there weren't any Indians doing smoke signals. <laughs> we naturally, the first thing I <laughs> naturally the first thing I thought of was Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, I can't imagine why. I'm definitely getting the earth also uh, in this, and, and the pepper. I'm getting a pepper on the tip of my tongue. I, I'd give this. I think it's a little stronger than you do. I mean, it's not oh, a mild cigar. Um, I, I, I'm, I agree with you, Moose. I, it's a two on the on the strength scale. Yeah, I'm getting a lot. Of, mine's, I'm getting a lot of sweetness. I mean, you got to remember, oh, yeah. Paul. Yeah. You smoke a lot of cigars when you're here, and uh, your taste buds may be used to having a stronger cigar, so you're not catching the the nuances. Yeah, I mean. I'm just saying. Well, I just got also, such a no, big hit of earth at the beginning now, now that I could not like pick up smoke. the other Yeah, yeah that's, that could be too. It had to be tight. They the might be spot. there, and I'll get them eventually, yeah, but yeah. right now it's buried under all that earth. Make sure you let the right one spot. <laughs> Virtually <laughs> positive. Uh, all right, what else is going on? You have industry news? Uh... Nothing major, like, I don't know, there was a couple of small wins in states where they, uh, there was a liberal state, too, where the, 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 uh, what's the guy who's the head of the state? Governor. Governor. <laughs> vetoed a, a bill that passed, like, it was a, uh, there was a ban on flavors. Yeah. And, uh, he, he vetoed it. Really? You yeah. You don't know what state a liberal, it was in? Wait a second, a liberal governor it, did that? Yes. That's hard to believe. Well, <laughs> put it this way. A Democratic governor. I can't say that he's liberal. But it's a fair assumption. He smokes acid. Yeah. That's all. Yeah, but I... <laughs> so he had to be... I want to say Connecticut, but I don't I don't know that it is Connecticut. But it was... Yeah, it was for Vermont, maybe? Somewhere on the East Coast? I don't know, man. I read it like 
yesterday, so I can't oh remember how far God. back. Massachusetts, anywhere, somewhere. Yeah, All those but, blue states. But it, so it was, but the, I mean, other than that, no, there's no significant industry news other than like all the new cigars that are coming out from after the trade show. Now they're, you know, they're mostly reporting on all the, the smaller. I, I'm looking at this and I'm like, I don't remember seeing this, these guys <laughs> at this trade show, but evidently they were there. I will tell you something very surprising about this cigar. And given the flavor and construction of it, it's even more surprising. This cigar is rolled at the Raices Cubanas factory in, in Honduras, Honduras. Yeah. the factory that makes most of the Alec Bradley stuff. Alec Bradley, stuff. yeah. You know what's funny is I was looking at this and I saw the, I'm like, oh, Alec Bradley, but then I'm like, oh, no, it's La Polina, but it, the, their logo looks a little bit like... Similar. At Similar. first glance, yeah. yeah. So that was... But uh, Bill Paley doesn't look anything like Alan <laughs> Cuban. <laughs> No. <laughs> or vice versa. For that yeah. So the, well, one of the reasons we're smoking this cigar is we're having a very aggressive uh, specials on this cigar coming up. They're actually it already started. In so all of our in stores. In all of our stores. Um, and it's such a good deal we can't we, even we tell can't you, say, but it's, it's a yeah. ridiculously good deal. Yeah, you have to come in and check it out because we can't say on, then they get really upset. <laughs> <laughs> But um, yeah, it's it's ridiculously good. So. Um, oh, and because it's a TAA. It's cigar, also a TAA cigar, yeah. So basically, in Another Eastern we can't Pennsylvania, say. you can't find this except at cigar cigars. Right. And a man used to oh. say on TV, "The prices are so low, they're insane." Yeah. So if I said what the deal was right now, we'd have to do this whole show over. Yes. So yep. there's no way in hell I'm doing that. <laughs> <laughs> That's one way to keep you from. Yeah. Uh, Spilling the beans. Yeah. Right. This point. <laughs> so, um, what else? What's happening in sports? Sports. The, uh, sports are the happening. Flyers did a their best impression of the 1964 Phillies. <laughs> or the or the 2023. I, I thought I thought they were Olympic divers. The East German Jets gave them a nine on the swan dive they, well, they took. Just, uh, <laughs> they lost yeah. eight in a row. Yeah. yeah. Lost they lost nine, nine to nine. three to the yeah. Canadians. The worst team in hockey. Yeah. Yeah. Canadians are the worst team in hockey? Yeah. Evidently not. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't they just sign that a couple of like, Russian goalies? The Flyers? Yeah. 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 But it's they're not playing with yeah, the they're team not, yet. They're not, they're a couple of years away. They're the, so they're not. Yeah, they're, they're young, right. young, young. My friend was they're really young. My friend was telling me he, he got to go to the Hockey Hall of Fame and the bar and That's he, in, uh, uh Toronto. He Toronto, said, yeah. so I'm talking to this guy, and he goes, he goes, who was that Russian goalie? I'm like, Vladislav Tretjak? He's like, yeah, yeah, I was talking to Tretjak. I'm like, are you kidding me? Was he just hanging out there? No, he's related to a Hall of Famer. Oh. Really? Yeah, yeah. It was horrible. They could have made the playoffs. They still, they still can it's mathematically, they're still in the hunt. Mathematically, yeah. When you have to say it's mathematically possible, <laughs> that means you're, you're, not, you're, not, you're not making it. <laughs> yeah, mathematically, the, the Mets can make the playoffs, but <laughs> right now, at today, this point today, in the season, today, yes. Today, <laughs> we, we have a comment from the production crew. Today, he's, he's saying you're, you're number not, one in this book, <laughs> but not tomorrow. <laughs> but not tomorrow. <laughs> it's crazy because you, you can't win the, the division in now in April. But you can but lose. You, can, you can lose it, absolutely. No, no one's beating the Braves unless like half the team goes down in a plane accident. They're having. I like your They're thinking. having some injury problems. <laughs> yes, no, I was just going to say they have this, some injuries. They lost their to, ace, uh, Strider. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah I, I, I think that uh, the league issued them a memo that they can't fly on a Boeing. <laughs> <laughs> well, they can fly. They just can't crash. <laughs> well, no on a Boeing and crashing. It's kind of redundant. I watched a little bit of the Phillies, not 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 a ton. I don't. I watch some of it. I listen to most of it. I love Scott Fransky. He's phenomenal. And then yeah, at the home does, games with Larry not, Anderson are awesome. He does not like you. Well, I don't care. <laughs> There's only one thing wrong with Scott Fransky. He was born in Dallas. That's a shame. But other than that, he's. he's it's not his fault. Though. I know it's not his fault. Blame his mm-hmm. parents. So, did, you, but, did you see the sign someone was waving at an airport? I saw this on the news. It said, if it's a Boeing, I'm not going. 
Um, yeah, I, I like listening to the games. Yeah. So, I think it's... Do you have like a little red transistor radio? I do. Is that you think you should? <laughs> no, I, I should, but I don't. You would like it even more. I, I do it when I walk my dog. So I have my phone, my, you know, my earbuds in and stuff. So, and then well, we get to listen to the game, the game today. Uh, today, yeah. It's, at one. It's at one o'clock. One o'clock. Yeah, something like that. Right yeah. around one o'clock. So. <coughs> yeah, I can listen to it today. Or I can put it on Hulu on my phone. I'm very upset they got rid of Reddick. Not, not. I mean, I liked him, but it's because I just got his jersey. Did you really? I mean, just like. Like the end of last year, so I, I I bought for the for the Super Bowl. I bought a AJ Brown jersey, mm -hmm. and left it. And you know, I went down to Xfinity, uh, Xfinity Live. Yeah. Right next, to him. you know, we watched the game. Blah blah blah. And I, next day, I left. I left the shirt in the hotel room, so I got one more. Oh. And I, like, <laughs> I know. I'm like, and I, I called. I called back to the hotel, and I'm like, hey, I think I left. And I'm like, oh, let's check. Like, nah, nobody found it. I'm like, yeah, I'm somebody's sure having a nice Christmas. Yeah. This year. yeah, yeah, exactly. So, so anyway, I, the rotten last luck with jerseys. So there's that, and then Raddick got traded. I'm like, really, really. I think they should have kept him. Um, I mean, he has still under contract. He could have, and he would have been playing for a new contract, which means he would have, you know, done his damnedest to get as many sacks as possible. Was it an age thing? Because he's thirty and he's you know a what? little bit younger. That 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 used to be when um, it was a different general manager. When it was um, what's his name? Leonard Toes. No. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't the general manager. The owner. Um, Oh my God! I can't believe I can't remember his name. But um, Dave Montgomery? No, that's baseball. Um, Bobby Clark? Oh my God! Stop! Forget it. Eddie Lamar? Eddie Lamar? <laughs> Sonia Henny? <laughs> no, that used to be their their mo when, especially when Andy Reid was here. Um, if you turned thirty, you were gone. Yeah. And that, that's not the case anymore. So. Could've I don't fooled. think it's an age thing. I just could have fooled me. He could have. They they, they 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 thirty three is about as old as they want their players. Well, before I'm just well, saying hey, thirty three. That's twelve years in the league. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's a long time. But the thing yeah. is, it used to be when they hit thirty, they were gone, and that's not the case anymore. I mean, look at you know Slay's over thirty, Jason Peters, not Jason Peters, um, Jason Cox. Kelsey, Kelsey. Is over thirty. Cox is over 30. Yeah, but they, Brandon was, they, were still, over they were still performing at a high I understand level. that, but that's not, it, it didn't matter for the Eagles. It used to be when you hit 30, you were time. gone. You were gone. And that's not the case anymore. So I don't think it was because of his age. I, I just think he... Financial thing? I think he wanted too much money. And, and it, to be fair to him, I mean, he severely outplayed his contract. But, and he wanted to be paid you know, comparable, and they just didn't want to do that for some reason. I, I don't know why. What was he making? Because they're paying Huff 17, right? I think he was making 14. He was making 14, but I think he wants like close to 20 or between 20 and 25. So, I don't know. That's a lot of money for a defensive end or for an edge, an, edge, an edge rusher. So, who can't do anything else. He doesn't stop the run. He doesn't he can't cover anybody. All he wants to do is rush the quarterback. And I, mean, I don't blame him because... 20 sacks I, is hard to... Uh, it's hard to argue him. with that. Uh, I understand. But Huff pretty good? Huff's he good. He has the same... And he's younger. Huff is younger, and Huff, same thing, though, only plays the... He can rush the quarterback. Uh, yeah, oh, he okay. can't cover the, the rush or anything like that, so... I don't know. Right. They're going to need defensive linemen. I mean, Sweat better step up this year. Um, Maybe they could draft somebody. Which, by the way, if you want to watch the draft, there's a couple of stores that are doing draft parties. What is really? So. Downing Town is doing one on the 25th, and they're going to have raffles. If you have the best draft picks of the first 10, you get a free gift card. Oh, really? That's yep. kind of cool. Oh, that is pretty cool. Did you send me that? Yeah. Like two months ago, he's had it in for a while. That's why. Well, that's why I didn't see it when I sent the email out yesterday. I looked for all the stuff and yeah. and and uh, there's a movie on the 26th that I got. Except 
it's not Top Gun 1, that was last month, it's Top Gun Maverick, you sent Top Gun 1 again. I sent whatever I was sent. Uh, I sent the one with Top so Gun Maverick. So they're playing Maverick this time? Yes, the second. on the 26th. Oh, great I heard movie. they're doing a third one, and I don't know if that's going to be any good. Yeah. We'll Besides, everybody would be too old if they waited another 30 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tom Cruise is going to need glasses, and I don't think you're allowed to fly at that point. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. Contacts. <clears throat> Probably another thing that you can do with drones. So. <laughs> I do like the second one better, though. I think. In number that'll, three, it's going to be... the name of the third movie, Top in, Gun Drones. Yeah. In number three, it's Jennifer Connelly and the lesbian from the first one are going to fight out for Tom Cruise. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see that. The lesbian from the first one? Yeah. What was she her name? Was I don't remember yeah. her name. Kelly McGill. Kelly McGill. Kelly McGill. Kelly McGill. Kelly yeah. You wouldn't recognize her. She didn't say anything around. about it when I slept with her. <laughs> she got some pretty bad taste if it was recent. <laughs> <laughs> Send your letters to care of Scott Atkinson. No, not me. Our toll. Sarasota, Florida. <laughs> <laughs> That would be funny if you didn't get letters <laughs> saying something. So aside from the draft party in the movie, is there, I mean, we're getting into event season. Is there Starting anything to, coming up? Yeah, well, we so got a bunch of stuff in May. There's going to be several stores doing Cinco de Mayo events. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The Downingtown's doing on the third the Artisano, uh, yes. which is uh, El Pulpo and the Viva La Vida. They're also doing a AJ. an AJ event. Shock. Shocking. Holy right cow. I know. Well, that's so, once a week, isn't it? I have a yeah. forged, I have a forged event up in Quaker Town. I just don't know the date of it yet. I don't think we've solidified a date. It's probably going to be on a Sunday, because we, we do really good events on Sundays up there. That's weird. But. It is weird, but we get tons of people there on a Sunday. So. That's because it's a working man's community. They're all at work. Yeah, they're at work during the day. Yeah. Sunday they can make it because they're all. Yeah, that could be. So. Having had a business in that town, I know what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> Quaker Town is a working man's community. Absolutely yes, it is. is. 100% blue collar. I got the, the wine flavor you guys were talking about. Did you? Just now? Yeah. I guess it was five, only in the little pieces. Like five or ten minutes ago. <laughs> you guys were talking, so I didn't want to interrupt. An important Eagles discussion. Yeah. Well, this is the... Uh, Friendly neighborhood show all about sports. Yeah. Yes. The Phillies better start hitting the ball. That's all I gotta say. Their pitching is holding up. It's their. The get, uh, pitchers are getting no support. Yeah, Wheeler gave only gave up three runs yesterday, and we got zero because we can't hit the ball. We need Aaron Judge. Yeah. We could use uh, what's the name? Well, we have tremendous home run hitters on the team now. Our our Lineup is stacked, one through eight. With big hitters. stacked, yeah, exactly. There isn't an out in there, but yet they still can't get They it. have to come out of a coma and start hitting the ball. Who's, who's the one, Rojas? Yeah. So, although he went three for four the other day. Ah, there you go. There you go. He may but have turned the corner. Bryce Harper had a big over for the beginning of the season. Yeah. And then he hit three home runs. And, and he hasn't hit since. Yes, he has. Yes. Yes, he has. He went two for four the other day, I believe. See, there you go. Two for four. He's, he's all right. You he's, sure we're still hitting like uh, 280? I think it's come down, but he's hitting better than he did last year. It's funny because he was like batting like 260, got one hit. He was at 289. Yeah. I mean, if, you really, <laughs> if you really look at it, the, the guys are hitting the ball, but they're not hitting them out of the park. At, at in the same inning. Well, they're not hitting them where the, they're hitting them all where other players are. That's a problem, That's too. A problem. But like, it's like Turner, I think after eight. yesterday's game, Turner's like 295. Batting really? average. Is he really? Yeah, he's just short of 300. Well, Brandon Marsh is playing well again. He's got a few home runs. He's hitting the ball very well yes, right now. Yes, he is. Seeing the ball well. So. You know, the only other thing that you can do and be wrong <laughs> or be right only one third of the time and yeah. be a superstar. Is a is to be person. a weather person. Weather person. <laughs> yeah. You can be wrong half the time. I want that job. Superstar. I want that job. Make six figures a year and be wrong 60% of the time. Yeah. Unless you're in Australia. They, yeah, same they, weather. They, <laughs> no, but they find the weather people if they get it wrong. They find them? Yes. Wow. 
John Belarus would be in prison. <laughs> <laughs> I think so, half of the weathermen yeah. in the so, United so States. They all be. take a class from uh, George Carlin <laughs> on weather reporting. Today, sun, tomorrow, clouds. That's it. That's all the Remember the hippy tippy weatherman? <laughs> 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 Tonight, <laughs> dark. Dark. Tomorrow, the sun will come up. Have you guys seen any videos of like places that were in the in the eclipse where the total they like they had a hundred percent totality, whatever they no. call it? Yeah, I was so disappointed. Like, they, we were like ninety cent percent blocked, and it was very bright out. And even some places were like a friend of mine lives in Maine. He said it was like ninety. He had ninety seven point four percent blockage. He says it was still light out. It's that last percent. How powerful is that freaking sun? That yeah. like that you know point like two point six percent of the the sun can still have everything lit up. Yeah. But I was I'm watching these videos where the like hundred percent blockage, and it's like black. Black. I had a customer. I'm so bummed that wasn't that one of those areas. I had a customer who went down to Texas to see it, oh, yeah? and he said it because it was total down there. He said it was awesome. Yeah, it was Elon it was Musk black. sent a video from his one of his space stations, and you just see the gigantic black circle on the Earth. That that yeah. was pretty cool. Uh, yeah, I that saw that. Yeah, yeah. Cool. I did see that. It was neat. I got glasses up there looking at it, but I was like, yeah. yeah. I, I looked straight at it, and it didn't. Well, we do it through the clouds, it. yeah. Well, I got some pretty good pictures too. Yes, I you did. I, I, sang, yeah, I, saw I had a good video. Awesome. I sent you. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> I, I didn't realize you sent that to George because I yeah. sent it to him too. You sent it to me too. Yeah, yeah. I sent it to the I, people you sent it to. <laughs> you sent it. You sent it to me, and I watched it. And then he sent it to me. I said, "I'm not falling for that again." <laughs> <laughs> so no, I I had to build one of those pinhole pinhole cameras. For my grandkids. Did you? Did you? Yeah. I heard they worked. They worked, they but the image is about that big. That's what she said. There's did, a you, did you see the box that Mike has on the table out there? No. Oh, yeah. It was for viewing the eclipse. Yeah. So that was a pinhole camera, too? I guess that's what it was, but I was informed because I didn't. I left to take my wife to the doctor's. Um, the him and Tiffany were running out every 10 minutes with this box. I mean, it's not a small <laughs> box. <laughs> No, the it's, big, it's about the, this freaking big. No, the bigger the box, the bigger the image, because you can get it farther away from the uh. hole. So I used like a, a long, thin box, and even so, the image was still tiny. What we can do this again in 2045, which is the next mm -hmm. total eclipse. Mm -hmm. no, where are you going? 2045. Tickets That's the, the next one. Tickets to the concert that night. <laughs> <laughs> I, was gonna say you wash I thought you meant you weren't going to be around at all by then. God willing, I won't be. Well, I'll I be will. in our 80s. Yeah, I'll be pretty freaking old by that point. When, do, when you'll 90s. be 80? So 2045. She'll be 80, so I'll be 80. 21 so years, I'll be 78. Might as well be 80. I'll be 88. <laughs> Might as well be dead. <laughs> That's not true. Uh, only the good die young brother. Yeah. <laughs> That's why you'll live forever, right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. That, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's get our final thoughts. I find this to be a pleasant cigar. Mm -hmm. Got good flavor. Um, the tastes really haven't changed much for me, mm -hmm. other than a, I did about two-thirds into the cigar, I finally started getting the earthiness. I wasn't getting a lot of that at the beginning. Um, Hell, maybe I did smoke it backwards, because that's the first thing. That yeah, I yeah, 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 maybe. Uh, I'm giving this an 8.75. Okay. Paul? Uh, I found that this cigar didn't change at all. For me, it's still all earth burying anything else. Mm -hmm. I give it an 8.5. Okay. Scott? I, th I thought it was sweet, but I had those construction issues that, and, and it, it, it's opened up a little bit since, so I'm getting more smoke, but I had to, every, you know when you get a cigar that's, you're not getting a lot of smoke get out of, you're like puffing on it every 15 seconds, so now it's, it, it's, it, it's burning hot. Um, you had to work on it too yeah, much. Yeah, I'd give it a, I'd give it an 8.25. I didn't think it was a great cigar. No. Oh, just one other, to add one other thing to the, the profile. 
I'm, maybe it's me, but I'm picking up a little cinnamon, which also could be to the pepper. I don't know, but oh, it, you got bark. It's just it's this what bark? No, no cinnamon. Cinnamon's bark. Isn't cinnamon, it? Is yeah. Bark. Cinnamon. So then, yes, you have bark. No, bark. cinnamon is bark. Dude, you can call it what you want. Okay. <laughs> it's the bark of the cinnamon tree. I didn't say it on the air. Is there it's a ground tree? up bark. You can say that on the air. I don't know what kind of tree it is, but it's the bark of the like, tree. Go out back and like grab your knife, your Bowie knife, and scrape off of some cinnamon for your tea. From your cinnamon tree. If you have a cinnamon tree. I've never seen a cinnamon tree. So that means there's cinnamon there? wood. Can you make it? Is like there? I was wondering, can you make a humidor out of cinnamon wood? Yeah, and you have a picture of a cinnamon tree. Is there a cinnamon tree? We'll find out. Know. We're about to find out. Oh, it's the bar. It's bark, so it's got to be some kind of tree. I don't know. We'll give you your wife. Paul's looking that up. Every rating. Cinnamon tree for sale. Yep. There is a there is a tree. And you can buy them. That's what not it looks cheap like. either. <laughs> a small evergreen tree. Really? That's what really? it is. Okay. What if you took a like grafted a. a a grapevine to it. And then you had cinnamon wine. <laughs> Paul would do something like that. <laughs> oh, that would be an interesting experiment. <laughs> sure would. Um, I yeah, agree so with this is how they harvest it. They they cut you should wear a white lab. right off the tree. Oh, cool. I think you should wear a white lab coat from now on. <laughs> Dr. I, Paul. Paul in the lab instead of fields. <laughs> Mad well, if I was gonna do that, I'd be uh, playing with yeast all day. If I was going to be in the lab, I'd be messing with yeast. Okay. We'll save that for next week. Yeah. No, what the hell you talking so about. So as for me, <laughs> this cigar. Um, as for you. Yeah, I agree with every, what everybody says. I'm, the predominant taste is earth. Life's too short to smoke cheap cigars. <laughs> You're done, huh? <laughs> <laughs> that means you can't say anything else now. You can't. Oh, sorry. Fin you we finally that? found a way to shut him up. Yeah. Just let him say his closing yeah. line at the beginning of the show, and he's finished. I get the same taste, uh, the, uh, the the earthiness from it. I do get sweetness from the, from it also. Mm. I'm getting a sweetness. Um, the retro hail is very pleasant. I like the retro hail. It doesn't make me sneeze. Um, and again, we're having, we're, we're having a great sale on these cigars. Um, you got to come in to see what they are, but it is an incredible sale. And our, you know, actually, our most aggressive sales that we've ever had, actually. The, on this cigar. On this cigar. And despite the fact that we didn't all do headstands over it, it is definitely worth trying. Yeah, absolutely. And with this deal, it's really definitely worth trying. Yeah. Um, it's, not a, it's, just, it's not a bad cigar. It's a, it's a decent cigar. It's a good cigar. Um, and for the price, and if you just want something to smoke, you want it outside working, um, you're doing lawn, you know, you're cutting your grass or something like that. It's just one of those. It's one of those <laughs> swimming. No, it's <laughs> it's a basic cigar. It's a basic cigar. And it tastes like a cigar. It, yeah, and it's good. Um, I give it a, a nine, or sorry, an eight, seven five. I'll give it like move. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's not a, it's not a bad, not a bad cigar at all. And if it's if you want something while you're just Mowing the lawn, or doing gardening, or whatever. It's, a, it's a great cigar. Fixing the roof, whatever. Pound snow. Do you think a lot of our viewers do gardening? I don't know. I don't know what they do. Not me. I don't the only time, I, only time I do gardening is when I'm backing the truck up over the flower <laughs> <Yeah>. bed. <laughs> what if you're putting in a retaining wall? No. That's hardscaping. Yeah. That's so, not gardening. It's better than manscaping. Uh, <laughs> So, thanks for watching. <laughs> we'll be back next week with another. Smoke them if you got it. Another episode. Another smoke episode. often and smoke happy. Don't you say anything. Ciao for now, everybody. <laughs> bye bye.